Welcome to Rick's Corner, brought to you by Old School Labs, the brand I trust and the only one I put my name to. Use my code, Drayson12, on the link below. Rick's Corner, the man, the myth, the legend, now on with the show. Welcome to Rick's Corner. Today I have some guests from Las Vegas. I have Carl Kaplan and Ivan Scarl who have come up to see me and do my show. Ivan is a weightlifter, Olympic lifter, right? Yes. Carl is a, uh, runs a house of brothels in Vegas of uh, hookers. <laughs> We've even uh, which is a weekly bit, customer. Yeah, I'm a weekly, a daily customer, an hourly if you can get it. Anyway, we want to talk about some things. Let's talk first of all about your. You're how old? Nineteen. When are you gonna be eighteen? Eighteen? Yeah. Soon? Yes, hopefully. Okay. So, what got you into doing um, Olympic lifting? Um, a lot of it started out from high school. Um, in high school, I was overweight and I was. Basically, not bullied, but I was just like the the lone wolf, uh, so to speak. And I found CrossFit, and I found some other things, and I fell up with Olympic lifting from there. And I just kind of kept with it, kept learning, and it's it's helped me transform myself mentally and physically a lot. Oh, there's no question about that. It's funny you said lone wolf. I don't know if you remember this because you're too young. Me too. I'm sitting high in the stool, aren't you? Years ago, back in the 50s, they had they had car clubs when I was in high school. They had, they had the clusters and they had this club and that club. And everybody would have a little plaque in the back window of their car. They remember that car club. Then they had one called the Lone Wolf. That was the guy that didn't belong to any clubs. <laughs> but but I always got humor out of that because I didn't belong to any clubs. But I've, I always felt my life like a lone wolf because I did what I wanted to do at my own pace. And I was happy with it. Weightlifting, bodybuilding, um, wrestling, whatever. And sometimes when you do that and it sets you apart from everybody else, you become the best in your field, you gain confidence. Definitely. Right? Yep. And you can you can exceed in almost anything that you want to exceed in. Because if you can exceed in that and you have the power and the drive to go forward, then you can apply that to anything you do in life. Now at your age, what do you want to be as you grow up? Or not grow up, but as you grow older. As I grow older, I want to be a business owner. I want to own my own gym. I want to help give other people the same benefits and confidence that I was able to get myself. Good idea. Now, to do that, you had to start having the feelings and the drive to do it. So if you have the drive with yourself, you'll have the drive to motivate others. Yes, definitely. And going into business is a lot of work, as Carl knows. It's, it's just a, it's very demanding. Uh, you got to put a lot into it. You got to be able to lose the first six months of your business mm -hmm. because it takes a while to develop an income. And even though you're helping others, um, you can't be too nice. And you know that mm -hmm. because you, you're, you get to be too nice to people and you give them things, they don't appreciate it and you get nothing back. So you've got to be firm on your rules and your payments and your memberships and all that so that you can keep a club going because it can't exist on its own. What happened with Joe Gold when he had a world gym, he had a lot of members come for free that were friends of his and when he passed away, all the guys said, well, why do we have to pay for membership? We didn't pay Joe. Well, Joe died. And his other people took over and they needed to keep the business going. So how did you guys meet? At the uh, gym in Las Vegas, Project Fitness. Yeah. He, he came in there. He was an aspiring athlete and uh, turned into a coach, a very good coach now as well. Very knowledgeable, surprisingly knowledgeable, and maybe not surprising, but very knowledgeable at a very young age, which is great. Well, because he learned on his own. Yeah, and I also think, you know, just like what I'm doing with this, what he's doing with that, it's very important to be passionate about what you're doing, and then you're much more willing to make the sacrifices in order to make it when you're passionate about it. There's no question about that. If you have a passion to do something in life, you'll do the best at it. If you do it because you have to, you won't. How many people go to work every day from 8 to 5 to a job they hate? And how many productive hours they put in? Very few. Yeah, I'd say probably 95%. People. Yeah, very few productive hours. They sit there and wait for the clock so they can go home. I've always worked, I started at your age actually, doing, doing my own thing um, with t-shirt designs and wrestling and playing in a band, a, a guitar, which I loved. I made a, a, a living out of it, and then I turned into wrestling and bodybuilding and made a living out of it, and I followed my passion. My parents at the time said, well, well why do you want to do that? Because that's what I want to do. Yep. I don't want to go to work for the bank. 
I went there for a year. I hated it, but I met a lot of people. I had a good time at the Teller's window because I you just yeah, yeah. Fun, have fun with people. But yeah. it wasn't my passion. And I have friends today that do do jobs and they hate it. They don't. It's not their passion. But a lot of people don't know what it is. They don't know how to find it. Um, I think weightlifting and bodybuilding and powerlifting and gyms, because they are so popular and they so get such good results, not only physically but mentally, can become a passion. Yeah, yeah, I know that myself. It's, it's, it's transformed me. And when I started off with fitness and learning about myself and my body, uh, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And I was able to find my passion for fitness and, and just individual betterment through weightlifting and through learning about a, a, a huge host of different things from nutrition and yeah. bodybuilding and all. How did you feel when you started seeing results in the mirror? Uh, I was I was really happy. I was uh, I was kind of shocked, especially when I got my first two little like mini abs and all that. <laughs> that, was, that was awesome. And that's just that's just diet, and it's everybody says, "How do I get abs?" I work, you know, two three hundred reps a day. This, this is not going to give you abs. What it does is make your stomach bigger. And I have this argument with people, I gotta work abs, work abs, work abs. No, you don't have to. You need to watch your diet and the abs come out. You know, you can do 100 reps, 200 reps a day, which is just to keep them hard, but it's not gonna define them that much unless you're really watching what you're eating. Exactly. How much of it do you think is diet? How much of the nutrition plays into the role? 80% probably. 20% of working out, 80% of what you yeah. put into your body. Yeah. You know, the 20% is divided between your workouts and your sleep too. Um, I mean, I found now that my age and, and, and having done what I've done, I can go to the gym and be in and out in 30 minutes. Okay. And I do, uh, let's just say I did chest and shoulders today. I did 15, 20 sets of each, and I was done in 40 minutes. I didn't wait. But you eat well, sleep well, so you yeah, feel good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah. The sleeping is a, is a big part. I don't have problems sleeping. Like a lot of people say, they're up all night long. I have trouble sleeping. A lot of people do. Yeah. But with the CBD oil, I, uh, I go right to sleep. I, as well. I keep a bottle next to my bed, I keep one in my office, and I keep one in the kitchen. I'm not doing this just for a commercial break because I really believe in it. And so I have periods at night where I wake up and I, I don't have anxiety, but I just I start thinking about the world and my life and getting older and thinking, oh my God, you know, <laughs> I'm getting older. I mean, I'll last the night. So I take a, a, a whole vial of that and within 10 minutes, I'm out. I just relax and go right to sleep. So you find it effective for what for what you need it for? Because I kind of need it for something a little different. Like yeah, I, and I, I think it works real well for that. Now on my leg, since it's a muscle, it's an irritated muscle spasm and whatever the injury is for this past year from other things I've had, has turned into now just a sore muscle and a bruise. So I've tried different ointments on it. Now the CB the ointment yeah. works pretty well, but I thought, well, I'll do the tincture because it's liquid. And I'll put liquid on my hand and I'll rub it because it seems to absorb, really go in there because it is a liquid. And I can tell in five or ten minutes that the pain is much less. Yeah. It's, I don't know anybody has done I, it that way, but it worked for me. Once again, what works for you may not work for me. Different right. things work for different people. Same, right. same with training, same with this. Like I use the topical cream. This is what I use the most. Yeah, but that's the same this, as this, isn't it? No, it's a little bit different. There's menthol in here, so it gets a little bit oh, of I a see. burning sensation on that. Okay. This has got more essential oils in it. Okay. And, you know, arrowroot powder, which penetrates that first level of the skin, all made with organic ingredients. And it just, this really helps my tendonitis. Bicep tendonitis. I oh my God, that's, 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 that's miserable. I had it. It goes all the way up my shoulders. Yeah. You know, when you're trying to. Your arm. Yeah, oh my God, yeah. And now this past week, it's kind of subsided quite a bit. I couldn't even get my t shirt over my head. But like how you use this daily, I use that daily, and it helps me. I can't reach you know. my shoulders. I have to have somebody rub it on for me. Somebody good looking? Usually my gardener. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're cutting those bushes. Come here, bro. This is shit on my shoulder. I got to go to the gym. Uh, but it helps. It does definitely help. Do you use this stuff, too? Oh, yeah, daily. Now tell me the truth. Are you being honest with me? Yes. I Say am. that. I'm being honest with you. I'm being honest with does you. Does that mean you weren't honest before? Not I'm always honest. I can't lie. <laughs> this is something that I have, a, I, have a, I have a peeve about because I'll talk to people and I'll say, let me be honest with you. Wait a minute. We've just been talking for a half hour. Weren't you honest before? And it's like, and they go, oh my God, I actually said that. And they, I said, yeah, you actually said that. And then you say, trust me. Well, trust me means like, why, why wouldn't I? Now that you said it, I don't know that I do. Yeah. I'm certainly not going to loan you any money now. 
But well, I do. You trust me? Does this really work? I, this really does work, right. and, and there's no BS about it. It really does work, and I've given it to a few people who tell me the same thing. They like it for various reasons. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, it's stress related. I think everybody has stress, right? No, I don't. Lucky you. I have no stress. I, have that much stress. I went through my list of people in my life that stress me out, and they're gone. I just X them out of my phone, out of my life, and most of them are women. <laughs> but it sure lightened up my load, and I feel really good. Um, but it does calm you down. Yeah. I had a friend who gave it to her dog. Yeah, well, we make pet products as well, and I mm -hmm. think it works well for dogs. Mm -hmm. Especially it worked well on that 4th of July with all those fireworks going off. We had Oh, a, yeah. We had a good day with sales. Uh, yeah, well, I give it to all my neighbors, and they, all the fireworks stopped. They just all passed out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, but you're right, because my cat was here. I didn't give it to the cat because I couldn't find her, but those those fireworks were loud. Yeah. Give it to my turtles. They didn't change you the way. They just look at me with that funny little look they get. <laughs> so um, you've entered some meets, obviously. Mm -hmm. You've won some shows. Yeah. You have trophies. Uh, I've, I have a few uh, medals and a few uh, medallions at home that I have propped up on my wall. Those are better because I have trophies that broke and they're in my garage full of dust. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd rather have the cash. Um, <laughs> how far are you going to take that? What's your goal? Um, I'm going to keep pursuing it as best as I can and as best as my body can support me. Yeah. Uh, I want to see how good I can do in all my areas of fitness. Like, for example, I also plan on possibly doing a bodybuilding show uh, w within the next five years. That's my timeline. Okay. So I want to make sure I take weightlifting and powerlifting and bodybuilding and everything that I do as far as I can while also having fun with it. Okay, we had this talk at lunch, you and I, and he was there. The, uh, the Olympic lifting and powerlifting is your foundation for your body. Definitely. It makes a lot of strength, it gives a lot of support, it builds a good foundation. Mm -hmm. Then when you go into bodybuilding, that's when you get into the sculpting of it. Yes. So you add some curls, some triceps, some other shoulder work, laterals, and this and that, and you work around the base that you were doing and you develop it into something. It's just like whittling and chiseling a piece of wood. Mm -hmm. So over time you do that, the rest of that part will be your diet, and your diet seems to be good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, can I offer you some cheesecake? No. <laughs> I do like how many years did it take you to prepare for the first? I'm still preparing. Still preparing. Yeah. So when's the next one? You know, I don't know if it took me a long time because I've always been handsome and beautiful. So I had no issue. So we have that in common. And we do. Right. If you look at my old wrestling pictures when I first started wrestling, I took a picture outside the YMCA and I had abs. I've always had abs. I used to lay on the rug and do sit-ups and have my mom hold my feet. And I thought that was the way to get abs until it burnt a rug burn in my butt. <laughs> but my abs were big and thick. They've always been big and thick, and they responded well. My diet back then wasn't so great, but I still maintained muscularity. So I entered a couple of shows, and I entered something in, I think it was Fresno, and I won. And then Venice Beach and a few things like that. And I didn't really care for bodybuilding. I didn't like to someone sitting out there judging me how I look who didn't even work out. You know, that, what, what do they know? But it did. I did. I was happy with myself, and then I took it into wrestling because I figured I could make more money wrestling in the ring than posing at a bodybuilding yeah. show. But then, but then in the seventies, though, you were eating like real food, though, not all this. Nonsense yeah, I that. mean, I still do. I still do eat real food. I, there, there's supplements. I take collagen. I take amino acids. Um, I'm not taking a protein supplement right now. Just the aminos because I like that. I think they work pretty well. Yeah. And a few things that Old School Labs provides me with that I really like. But as far as a protein drink, uh, no, it's just an amino acid, which I like. It's not so thick and heavy, and it works pretty well. And then I do the egg whites from Egg Whites International, which comes in a gallon, and I, I do about eight pumps of 26 grams of protein, which to me, that's my protein. Because okay. it's readily digested, and it's easier to digest, and it's not a powder. So that works good, and I, I wish I would have found that years ago, because I would have been that a long time. When I was much younger, there was no proteins. You had very few protein powders. You had a, a little bit of milk and egg. You could, if you had to shop for it, you could hardly find it. And I mixed that with water. Weeder had his proteins, but I don't think too many people took it because we're not sure if it ever actually worked. I don't think you need it. I think you need real food. You need real food. You need chicken breast, you need tuna fish, you need eggs, and you need beef, and you need all that stuff that's real edible food to put on muscle size. And a lot of it. And the steroids, that comes later. I mean, it's, 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 it's un... It's unfortunate that, but that in competing against other people is necessary because that's what they do. But now it's kind of gone too far. It's gone way too far. You have the natural contest, and I did it really, really well naturally without taking anything at all. 
Uh, and then when I got my hands on some D-ball at a younger age, I took a bottle and my God, it blew up like a balloon. But health-wise, I don't think it was good. And raised my blood pressure. I held water, and then, you know, if you want to live a long life, you got to take care of yourself and not do stuff like so that. Was, there was a price to pay for that. Price to pay for everything. Yeah. That's right. There's a price to pay. So you just put your time in and work hard. And, and I one day, like you, I looked in the mirror and I was younger, and I said, oh, "Who's that guy? He's so muscular." I didn't realize I looked like that. You know, you see yourself every day, and you don't really know what you look like. And someone says, gee, I had a girlfriend say, you're getting off your muscular. I said, is there possible that you can be too rich or too big? I don't think so. No. She yeah. didn't like it because she says, you get more looks at the beach than I do. And I said, well, what do I got to tell you? Yeah. It's the way it goes. Guys and women. Women look at you, and guys want to be built like you. So, and that's what wrestling was about. They told me, when you go in the ring, you're selling flesh. The guys want to be like you, and the women want to be with you. And it's, it makes a lot of sense to be in shape and take care of yourself. But the days of my heavy lifting like you, I, it's way too many injuries, and that's something you need to watch out for. Because if anything, the slightest thing starts to hurt a little bit, starts to tear slightly, back off, because it can rip. I ripped my quads, and I tore a tricep off, and um, I've had a lot of damage to joints from wrestling, and actually heavy weights. And then I found as I got older, and as you get much, you get a long way to go yet, you don't need the heavy weights anymore. All of a sudden you've developed yourself and you can go in and get a medium weight workout or machines in and out in 30 minutes and everything stays the same and looks good. With all those injuries and all that pain, I'm glad I'm able to give you something to help alleviate that a little bit yeah. organically and naturally. Yeah, it does help quite a bit. And um, the organic uh, effect of it, I'm, I'm glad that it's not like a uh, synthetic or whatever it is, you know. Chemicals, artificial yeah. flavors, yeah. a lot of products that are out there with any product that are just not good if you go to the grocery store and read the label of any box most of the products are not good no and you go to the doctor and he gives me celebrex for a joint pain well celebrex has a lot of side effects i can't take it with blood thinners because it thins my blood it can cause bleeding uh there's certain things i can't take ibuprofen there's medications that just have so many side effects you just can't do it this has none i mean i can take this all day and all night long and never have a side effect that was kind of the idea behind this. Yeah, I mean, the, the only the only thing it might do if I take too much is I might get a little bit loggy and tired throughout the morning from having it at night. You know, that if I take two or three droppers during the night to sleep, in the morning when I wake up, I'm a little bit tired, but by the time I eat and get to the gym, I'm, I'm awake. Ready to go. Yeah, yeah. But it uh, definitely works, and, and it also works on my skin for skin cancer. I don't know if a lot of people know that, but when you sit in the sun a lot, like we did back in the 70s, I developed skin cancer in my arms and my head and my face and really? little dots, little dry, dry areas, but the CBD oil, um, if I rub that in there for a few weeks, it seems to really smooth the skin out and get rid of it. I've had a lot of people tell me it helps with acne, but I did, this is, I'm glad it helps with that. Same principle. Yeah. It's still a skin eruption. So. Yeah. Um, and it does help. Yeah. It's good. And I'm so much sharper mentally now. I'm all that tanning. Well, I know what it's from. Hey, when people tell me that. Well, you know, you sat in the sun all those years. That's why you're suffering. I said, like, okay, I know. You don't need to tell me. It's like when I go to the gym. You know you're walking better. Are, are you analyzing me? And why are you telling me? You think I don't know how my leg feels? They look at me and, how's your leg? You know, it's like I get so tired of people just analyzing every move I make. When they do that, I guess I'm just getting older and I feel like Clint Eastwood would get off my lawn, you know? <laughs> you can only take so much for people looking at you and trying to figure you out and, and say things like on this show, are you eating fiber? Yeah, well, you should be eating fiber. I know what I'm supposed to be eating. Don't tell me if you're 20 years old what I should eat. I take Metamucil. It works fine for me. You're not eating any vegetables. How do you know what I eat? I told you what I ate for breakfast. I didn't mention dinner. You know what I mean? People assume that they know what you do and... Uh, I'm going to go on a rant about this, but in life they don't know what you do. They think they know just by one show that this is what you do your whole life, but it's not. Right? Right. I try to mix it up. I try to add different things to my diet. I try to add different things like this and see what results I get because by experimenting you learn what works for you and what doesn't work for you. The things that don't work for me, I throw out the door. The things that work I daily basis, I'm consistent. I never change. And I've had women say, you're certainly set in your ways. I said, yeah. Why not? Yeah, it's not for me. change now. And then, yeah. You know, like this one. Some girl said to me, like, you have a mind of your own. I said, well... <laughs> What's wrong with that? I don't understand. Whose mind would you like me to have? <laughs> yes. His? <laughs> well, this is how I think, and it works for me, and um, I put it all together at the end of the day, you end up being better at what you do. Right? Yep, that's what matters. Is it? 
Yeah. Are you sure? Yes, definitely. Are you being honest with me? I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> Whoa. There we go. <laughs> You're making him nervous. I don't know. Uh, Imagine if we had some girls here. No, that's the same thing. <laughs> it happens all the time. Well, anything else you'd like to add? No, thank you very much for having me, as always. You know. Well, of course. And thank you for coming of course. all the way from Las Vegas. I'm going to give you a dollar, and I want you to put it in a machine, and I want you to win me some money. All right. And I want you to tell me for sure it was my dollar that won, not yours. All right. You'll have to wait about a year and a half, but... Why? I'm 19. What's it got to do with it? I think you got to be 21, I think. Well, I was driving at 15. I didn't have a license. Oh, you I think that matters <laughs> to me? <laughs> yeah. I just say, break the law and have fun. All right. right. You only live once. I can go with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys for watching Rick's Corner, and uh, stay tuned for more, and thank you guys for being here. Remember, the CBD oil is on my website. It's on my, my show, and there's a link to it. So if you want to buy some, Carl will give you a good deal. He'll come out and apply it himself, and you just lay there and enjoy it. That's what you look like. You can look like anything, it doesn't matter at my age. That's how much money you got there. Yeah, that's true too. <laughs> See you guys next time. Right, thank you. Bye-bye. Hope you enjoyed the video brought to you by Old School Labs. Use my discount code DRAYSON12 on the link below at oldschoollabs.com. Hey everyone, now you can have the Gold's Gym logo drawn by me, the artist Rick Drayson. Personalized and made out to you and signed by me to frame and put on your gym wall or wherever you see fit to do so. It's a piece of bodybuilding history. It will never be duplicated again. It's the largest selling icon t-shirt logo in the world. And I'm the guy that drew it. And I will draw it for you. Just go to my website, rickdrayson.com and order there. You can pay through PayPal and it'll be sent out right away. And be sure to watch Rick's Corner for all the videos on bodybuilding, nutrition, fitness, pro wrestling, and anything that suits your interests as far as getting physically fit and being the best you can be from the golden era of bodybuilding. Baby, see you next time.